Koiki Media bringing the work closer to your doorstep. 17th, 11, 2024. 14, 14 from London. Nigeria expired 10 years ago. Needs renegotiation. Professor Ango Abdullahi, the Fulani man, and one of the leaders of the northern part of the fraudulent country called Nigeria. The convener of the Northern Elders Forum, Abdullahi Ango. The chairman of the forum, Ango Abdullahi, stated this in an interview on the sideline of a national dialogue on homegrown paramilitary system organized by a group of members of the House of Representatives under the ages of Parliamentary System Support Group, PSSG. Ango Abdullahi noted, Nigeria was born in 1914 fraudulent amalgamation. It was a product of an edit by the colonial British officials. They were largely military in consultation with a few of our elders, about five or six of them. The Sultan of that period, the Shewo Bonu of that period, the Allah Fiofoyo of that period, Obong of Calabar of that period, and other names that I have forgotten. They sat down and looked at the development that was taking place in a colonized British areas of Lagos, Southern Nigeria, and the North. So by the 1914, the colonial masters in Britain wanted to solidify their gains so that they could more easily exploit the colony known as Nigeria. That was how they sat down and agreed that they would amalgamate the territories of Lagos, South and the North. And the wife of the Governor General, Lugard, at that time, Flora Shaw, Alashewe, was the one that gave us our name, Nigeria, N-I-G-E-R-I-A. In the edict, if you read it, it was clear that we were being encouraged from various backgrounds to come together and build a country called Nigeria. And our leaders at that time agreed that we would try. That has actually failed. But we were advised in the details of the edict spelled E-D-I-C-T, that we should be monitoring the progress over the years, but the life of the edit was 100 years, which was in 2014, which meant that the edit expired in 2014, which is 100 years of, from its formation. The question now is that we are now in 2024, this kind of dialogue remind us that we have a history that started in 1914, and in conclusion of that edit, it says, if we fail to be a country that we will call our own, and we are proud of our country, by the expiration of that period, the various components that were in that amalgamation discussion should go their separate ways, which is why the Yoruba, the Biafra, and the Awusas are all campaigning for the right to self-determination. Ango Abdullahi went further to say that the dialogue was one of the ways to chart a path forward for the country known as Nigeria that was never meant to be. This dialogue should really be as objective, as passionate, if possible, to look at some of the things that we did wrongly with a full stop. One of the things that we did wrongly was to bring us in a system that did not fit us. If we can, we should work on something. It must not necessarily be a typically parliamentary system from our, coloni from our former colonial masters, it could be something else is said. And I will add this 
to the discussion with this particular clip that I will put to you in just about a few minutes. Once again, these are the words coming from the fraudulent Fulani leaders that stated clearly that it is time that Nigeria should break. But the question many people are asking is, is Nigeria a nation? And these would answer your question. As we add these to the discussion this morning. There is no land called Nigeria. There is no language called Nigeria. There are no people called Nigerians. We are only deceiving ourselves. We are not Nigerian. Ah, okay, where is Nigeria? As a, where is the land called Nigeria? Where is the, what is the Nigerian language? We are nations that have been forced together to live in one pathetic country. So, anybody who goes there today to say, uh, pray for Nigeria, that person is just deceiving himself because the people who want to be that Nigeria are not sat down to agree if they want to be Nigeria. The people, who are the people? The indigenous people have not agreed if we want to be one Nigeria, and a criminal government of Shetima has gone to United Nations to say this. Today, we are all witnesses to the heart-wrenching situation in Gaza and other Palestinian territories. We cannot discuss war and peace, conflicts and resolution, or humanitarian imperatives today without reflecting on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that has been waging since seven of us last year. Of course, the conflict predates this period and has been simmering for a better part of half a century. What this tells us is that the international community has failed to live up to the spirit and aspirations of the United Nations to reach the wall of inequality, violence and domination of one people by another. Justice is antithetical to revenge. Freedom is an inalienable right and a natural entitlement that cannot be denied to any people. The Palestinian people deserve their independence. They deserve to have a home of their own and territories already recognized by this very assembly and by international law, which is being routinely ignored. Nigeria continues to urge efforts to bring back on track the two-state solution. Two solution, just as Baba Kitoye said in 2019, when he also spoke like this. The Yoruba-speaking tribe of Nigeria has been accepted as the 45th member of the Unrepresented Nations and Peoples Organization. Leader of the Yoruba World Congress, Professor Banji Akintoye, says the membership represents a very important step in the collective quest of well-meaning Yoruba people to achieve the goal of dignity and self-determination. It is my great pleasure and pride to inform you that the Yoruba nation has been admitted to the membership of UNPO. UNPO means Unrepresented Nations and People's Organization with its headquarters in The Hague. The UNPO expressed their uh, gladness to welcome the Yoruba Nation as a new member of UNPO and they are looking forward to working with us. It is important because it is a great stride and it represents a very important step in our collective quest to achieve the goal of dignity in the country in which we live and also to achieve the goal of self-determination for our nation. Our Yoruba nation now has a voice on the international stage via the machinery of the UNPO which maintains a permanent presence before the United Nations and before other international agencies like the European Union, the African Union, the United States government, and the governments of various other countries across the world. And this was what we were told as Jonathan also made it known that the country known as Nigeria 
is only the intention of Britain, and it is only Britain that wants to keep Nigeria together. This is going to be the last video. I'm thinking about how we've been having this conversation about the unity of Nigeria. And I reflect back at some of the prominent statements made by some of our founding leaders. And I feel that probably this will help us to have a conversation on the Nigerian unity. I just brought four, not to bore you. First, and I'm quote, and I quote, not my statement. Nigeria is not a nation. It's a mere geographical expression. There are no Nigerians in the same sense as there are English, Welsh, or French. The word, the word Nigerian is merely a distinctive appellation to distinguish those who live within the boundaries of Nigeria from those who do not. This is accredited to Chief Obafemi Awolowo, the former Prime Minister of the Western Region. The second one, and I quote, it is true that we politicians always delight in talking loosely about the unity of Nigeria. 60 years ago, there was no country called Nigeria. What is now Nigeria consisted of several large and small communities, all of which were different in their outlooks and beliefs. The advent of the British and that of Western education has not materially altered the situation. And the, men, and the many and varied communities have not knit themselves into a composite unit. This accredited to Sir Amado Bello, former Premier of Northern Region. He thought, and I quote, since 1914, the British government has been trying to make Nigeria into one country. But the Nigerian people themselves are historically different in their backgrounds, in their religious beliefs and customs, and do not show themselves any sign of willingness to unite. The Nigerian unity is only a British intention for the country. Koike Media bringing the world close out to your doorstep. So, 